In this video, I'm going to show you how to do interactive PDFs. So this allows um, you to be able to send a PDF to somebody and then they can actually fill it out like as a form and send it back to you um, or wherever they need it to go. So this is um, a very useful skill to have. And in one of the assignments, um, it's a homework assignment, I had you write up eight questions that you wanted to ask me. So you're going to be using those questions. Um, for this assignment eight. Um, and there are two panels that you're going to need for this um, uh, for this assignment. And under window articles is the first one. And the second one is buttons and forms. And mine open together, but yours may not. So if they don't, it's under interactive and then buttons and forms. So you're going to need both of those um, open. So what I asked you to do was to type in your eight questions to me for the last assignment. And if you did that in Word, you could just copy and paste them into your InDesign file that's eight and a half by um, 11. And I asked you to put some space between them. So use the entire page. There's no reason to have your questions end way up here. You need to give enough space for somebody to answer the questions. So if you go to, um, like if you're thinking about how much space does somebody need for a date and how much space does somebody need for a name, um, you know, I mean, I for those two, they could be a little closer or it could be where you do something like that. Um, as well so that you know there's enough room for a date and there's plenty of room for a name so you could do it that way too um, what when is your birthday is a very short question so this has less space than some of these down here um, what do you want to be when you grow up what's your dream car that won't take too much space unless I want to get in detail um, if somebody wanted to get into some kind of detail so what we are going to do is we're going to use the rectangle frame tool so if you hovered, I'll tell you rectangle frame tool. We're going to go ahead and select that and we're going to make a box after each of the questions and it needs to be large enough for somebody to actually answer the question. So my date box can be definitely a little smaller. Um, my name box, I'm duplicating that, but I don't have to. Um, I like to do it that way because then the height is the same on these that are just like a one kind of a one tall. Um, some people have long names, so make sure you give them something that's a little bit bigger. Um, oops. When is your birthday? I'm gonna duplicate that again. And you can duplicate a couple of ways. I could copy paste, command C, command V, and it'll just throw that box in there. Or I can click on one, hold down command option shift, Sorry, that didn't work. Start dragging it and hold down Command Option Shift. So drag first. So I like to pay attention to where um, where these line up. Um, so I'm going to use that margin there, and then I'm going to use the margin that's over here, and um, that feels pretty good. Notice that I'm giving it a little bit of space here. That's important. So start dragging Command Option Shift. Start dragging, command option shift. Start dragging, command option shift. And my space between these is equal, so um, kind of made it easy for me um, making one box and kind of using that there. Okay, so once you have all the boxes, these are just boxes. They're not interactive right now. Um, and I know that because they're just a blue, um, outlined box and you'll see the difference here in a minute um, when we make it an actual interactive um, type box. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to drag this box into the articles, um, this box at the bottom, and I'm going to name it date. So that um, is called the date. That's the date one. So it's associated with it. And so now you can see that it is in the, the articles, um, it's in that articles panel. Um, and then what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna click, um, actually I should have, before I did that, I should have done the buttons and forms, but we'll see if it still works this way, it should be fine. Um, I'm gonna click on this in the buttons and forms, um, I'm gonna click on this and 
um, there's lots of options here. You could um, you could easily make it um, a button, a checkbox, a combo box, a list, uh, a list, radio button, signature field, and a text field. So we're going to make it a text field. And then notice what happens. This changed to a dashed blue line outside. So that's how I know the difference between what's interactive and what isn't. So um, we're going to go ahead and do that for all of them. And um, when I let me click off of this real quick. So when you click on it, you can see that it's a dashed, um, it's a dashed box, um, and that's what you want them all to be. So you're going to repeat these steps uh, for each of these. So we're just going to click on each one, text field drag it to this. We're going to name this one name because it's under the name area. So you can see here we don't need those um, expanded. I'm just going to collapse them here. So text field, drag it down here and we could just do date of birth, DOB, and there it is. And it tells you it's a text field and you'll notice this one says rectangle. So because I dragged it to the article first, it did not save that. Um, it didn't make it the, um, the correct thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. And then I'm gonna drag it back into, um, I didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna, I don't wanna drag it under name. I want it to be its own. So this one's gonna be date and I'm gonna say okay. And because I want them um, in order, well, let me move that one. So let me move name down. So I want date first, date, name, birthday. So date, name, birthday. So I like to keep them in order. Okay, so then color, this is your favorite color. So text field. And you can notice that there are some other um, options here. And we're just going to leave it as the default on release or tap. Um, that's perfectly fine. Um, Okay, so this one I'm going to drag down here and we're going to call this color. So you're just going to continue for all of these. Drag this down below. Kind of gets confusing when it has it collapsed like that. It's kind of weird. Um, okay, this one I'm going to call hobbies. Next one. Drag this one in. This one's called vacation. So I'm just doing a little abbreviation. No reason to um, type too much, just so we know which ones want which. And also, we could click on one and it'll tell us which one. Um, <clears throat> where have you not been but want to go? Um, so want to go, say OK. So. Um, all right, and then this one, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? So drag this in here, grow up. You could also put occupation if we wanted to. Um, I'm gonna pull this out so I can expand it a little bit more. Okay, and then um, we're on dream car, so text field. Drag to articles, um, dream car. And this one's where do you want to live? Okay. So now um, if I click on all these, you can see that they're all those blue dash lines. So that means that um, these are editable. And you may want to make color a little bigger in case somebody's got some crazy fancy color that they want to put in there. Um, and that's it for this part. So I'm going to go ahead and go file. And I'm going to save this as just because I already had this saved and I don't want to, I want to leave my original file. So save as, um, I'm going to call this, oops. Oh yeah, I could call this demo. I'm gonna call this demo done. Oops. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna save this 
there. But then the next step is we're going to export. So I'm going to hit Command E, but remember it's File Export if you want to do it that way. And instead of saving it as a PDF um, print, we're going to save it as PDF Interactive. And whatever you have it named, hopefully it's the nomenclature, so don't forget your last name, first initial. Um, and I don't name my files that or else you, everything you get from me is going to have my name. Um, for teaching, I just don't. So I'm going to go ahead and say save. And um, we're just going to export this page. It's only one page. We're going to go ahead and say export. <clears throat> okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open this PDF. Oh, I forgot that it's, um, I have it as a two page. So this is what yours should look like. And then what happens is I can actually come in here and I can type May 31st, 2020. What's your name? So this is what it should look like when you're done. Um, so you wanna make sure that you open the PDF and that there are none of your questions that are missing blue um, boxes and make sure that they're lined up like all of my boxes are the same width and the same height and that just makes it a lot cleaner. They don't have to all be the same height. If one of your questions is like all gonna take more, then of course make it a little bit taller. Um, these are only one liner so that's why they're small but they're still the same height so it still feels um, organized. So that is how you make an interactive PDF.